Welcome to another In Wheel Time podcast. Wheel.com. It's the In Wheel Time car talk show ahead. We are going... I'm sorry. I didn't turn the turn page. Turn the page, Bob turn the Seger. Page. Yeah. Who? Bob Seger, turn the page. Is that a song? Yeah. yeah. Well, what do I know? Well, I'm, I mean, I like Bob Seger, but I don't know all of his songs. Well, you're having difficulty with paper, too. So. Yeah. <laughs> uh, coming up, we're going to well, have uh, a little bit later on in this uh, in this segment, Sergeant Steve Woodard, Texas DPS. Uh Call him State Trooper, whatever. You'll hear my thoughts on driving the new 2024 Honda Ridgeline. And Mars has the upcoming events calendar just ahead on the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show. Howdy, along with Mike out of this world, Mars. We always need more Jeff Zekin. Chief Engineer David Ainsley is back from the UP of Michigan, but he's sleeping in this morning. Mm -hmm. Recuperating. Yeah. Recuperating. That's it. Uh, from all that clean air and clean living up there in the UP. Hey, wait a minute. Make you sick. Ainsley, clean living? Are you serious? I, well, I think it's the clean <laughs> air. It's, it's just a facade. Uh, uh, yeah, never mind any of that. Okay. The air I get. Yeah. yeah. Got it. Anyway, thanks for joining us today. We were vacant last weekend, so we played a uh, rehash of a show that we thought was pretty interesting. We'd gone up to Granbury, Texas for the Lone Star Street Rod Association. State run. What a fun trip! That it, it always is, and it's a great event. That's something that you should you ought to check in and check out. No uh, hot rod tour for him. Well, hot rod tour to Texas, yeah, yeah, most definitely. But the Granbury thing, uh, Street Lone Star Street Rod Association, and it's in a park in Granbury, and uh, it it it's really a cool event. Different cars that you've never seen before, and these guys, most of them drive the cars in, okay. and we're we're huh. They're, they're really going to press. They're going to try and get 400 this year because Put your headset on. of their. Uh, in 25, it'll be their 50th anniversary mm-hmm. of their state run, and they're they're pushing for having 400 cars there. Ooh. I'd like to go up to. Yeah, yeah, you, yeah. You should next year when when it comes about. Um, it's right at the. <laughs> In, yeah. in the, in the first May. weekend in June, I believe. Is it is the first weekend in June? Anyway, it's a great event and uh, some really cool cars that are driven. Mostly all street rods. Is it a certain yeah, year yeah. and back? Well, next year they're going to go to the the thirty year roll that like some of the others, so they can get a few more people involved. You know, older guys. Because we're, we're all dying off. Yeah, I was trying not <laughs> to say that, but yes, that's it. And. Uh, yeah, so it's, a, it's a great it, – go to Lo- Lone Star Street Rod Association. Uh, and they've got some members here in town, too. Yes. It's, it's really a statewide thing, and this is their once-a-year get-together up in Granbury. You ever been to Granbury? Yes. Yeah, south of Fort Worth. Very it, nice. it's, it's really a cool place. Uh, a great atmosphere. Uh, the gals like it because yep. of the downtown area. I like it, too. The downtown area is very cool. Um, kind of like uh, Victoria. I had no clue about Victoria until we moved the entry thing, the, the g- gathering the night before we do the hot rod tour, to downtown. And the city opened up the doors and said, come on down. They closed the entire square. All the cars were in the, around the courthouse down Victoria? in Victoria, Texas. Mm-hmm. Yeah, they had some sort of uh, celebration, anniversary thing yeah, going it was, on. They uh, had the orchestra there. It was like the... Oh, yeah. it was a, it was a uh, a moment of history for Victoria. Right. Uh, I don't know how many years it was, but I think they were doing a celebratory. And the symphony yeah, had symphony an anniversary, so it, it was a really big deal. It was a big deal, and it was lots of fun. And of course, you know, this uh, I've been with the guys uh, that put the show on now for this was the third third year third year, and uh, it's a three day event. So it starts on a Thursday, and we take off on Friday and start driving. And, you know, when you got 300 cars in a row, you go to all these little uh, towns up through central Texas uh, headed north. And it is tons of fun. Took the Shiner Brewery Tour again this year. They're going to move it this year. And I know that he's been in touch with uh, John Hovis. So we'll see if that works out. Every year is a different route. Different Different route. And it, it's fun. Uh, the best little town on the way is Yoakum, Texas. You ever heard of Yoakum? <laughs> yes. Yeah. It's a great little town. And they brought the fire department out. The flag hanging from the big ladder in the school kids are all lining the street it's tons of fun uh but uh yeah and it's all a bunch of hot rod guys with cool cars taking a tour and, you know it, it's kind of like the uh the tour that uh, runs along 
the Gulf Coast. Mm-hmm. Uh, I can't remember the name yeah, of yeah, that. Yeah. I've never been cruising on it. the coast. Cruising, cruising the coast. The coast. Yeah. yeah, I don't. They don't really cruise like the hot rod tour. They call it that because it's like miles and miles long. Right, because there's different but, events but these, in different stages. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, it's more along the lines of the Hot Rod Tour, the actual Ex- Hot Rod Power Magazine Tour. Tour, Power Tour. Or the uh, yeah. Woodward Dream Cruise, that's sort of like that, yeah. the, the southern one. Right, Yeah. where they, you know, everybody gathers up here, and then everybody leaves, but not necessarily all together at the same time. Right. Yeah. Where this one, we all leave together at the same, same time. time. Yeah. yeah, it's tons of fun. Uh, and, you know, get down to Victoria, and the entire Victoria Police Department has the intersections blocked oh, to God. get us on the highway to go. And it just, it, it's a lot, yeah. of, a lot of come a lot of fun, a lot of guys that you've never met before. Uh, the, uh, How many broken down ones? You know, it's, 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 it's amazing. The, there was only one or two, I think, that actually pulled Didn't off it, during yeah. the run, I heard. We had, we had one uh, deal that we were out in the middle of nowhere, and somebody had to take a leak. They had to go to the bathroom. So they pull off into this little bitty, little bitty, tiny gas station, you know, and everybody else pulled into the gas station. <laughs> like, follow and, the leader. Yeah, and it was hysterical. I, the lady was just overwhelmed. She was in there by herself. And I said, do you need some help? She says, oh, my gosh, can you help me? I said, I'll help do anything you want me to do. So I helped her, you know, here you go. Bag up groceries. Bag, bag up whatever. To carry out. <laughs> was, Probably bought her whole inventory out. <laughs> Probably, yeah. Made best, best day she ever had in her life. That's exactly right. Yeah, the most in, uh, yeah, most income that they've ever had in that little yes. store. But for a little emergency pit stop, everybody followed. Yeah. So Steve Woodard, uh, DPS, is supposed to be here now. He's going to join us in just a little bit. But in the meantime and in between time, I want to get him a car review. Very okay. good. Which His one choice. are we doing? We're going to do the Honda Ridgeline. Okay. Okay. Are you are you okay with yeah, that? Yeah, go for it. You All can right. start. Okay. Um, so I got a chance to drive the 2024 Honda Ridgeline. It comes in these trim levels: the Sport, the RTL, the Trail Sport, and the Black Edition. The reviewed trim level is SE, all-wheel drive, Trail Sport. This is a mid-sized pick-em-up truck. Seats five. Uh, exterior changes from last model year. Oh, a few updates here and there, but nothing major. Exterior features, modern grille with a faux front skid plate on it. Um, it's conservatively stamped doors and rear quarter panels. And uh, also the taillights are conservative. If you like conservative, Honda is your brand. Dual exhaust below the black rear bumper. What I liked about it, the under the radar kind of styling. What could use improvement? Well, I think that they need to do a zoomy model. Does that make sense to you? A zoomy model. Hmm. You know, some gussy it up a little bit. Oh, gussy it up. Yeah. Uh-huh. You know, technical term. Uh huh. That's right. Gussy it up. Uh, interior highlights include um, a cool interior, very conservative again, functional but dated looking on the interior. Uh, controls straightforward, easy to use. Instrument cluster and screen graphics are spot on. What I liked about it, the new larger touch screen by an inch this year. What could use improvement? If you're looking for a capable midsize and don't want to make a splash, this is your truck. Hmm. And speaking of old school, it's got a three and a half liter V6 engine, 280 horsepower, 262 pound feet of torque. It's old school. Uh, because everybody's going to turbocharged four cylinders these days. Nine speed automatic transmission. Now it'll tow up to 5,000 pounds. Payload 1,521 pounds. So it is capable. Gets 18 miles per gallon in the city, 23 on the highway for combined to 20. I got 22.5 miles per gallon over 279.8 miles. What I liked about it, plenty of power from the old school V6. Uh, what could use improvement? Offer a turbo four. Why not? You guys make IndyCar engines. You know how to do turbochargers. You know how to do four-cylinder motors. Do it. Uh, ride and handling, smooth. Car, SUV-like ride. Uh, this is where the Ridgeline has an advantage over other mid-sized trucks, I think, is the ride and handling. Pricing. Well, um, base trim price on this is $44,980. So this is a pricey vehicle. By the way, it has 7.5 inches of ground clearance, which isn't a whole bunch. Hmm. Price is tested. Fifty-five nine ninety-five. If you want the base model price, 
uh, $39,750, the most expensive among its competitors. And they include the Chevy Colorado that starts at $29,500. The Jeep Gladiator goes for $37,895. I didn't know it was that pricey. And the Toyota Tacoma starts at $33,700. And that's my review of the 2024 Honda Ridgeline all-wheel drive trail sport. You know, they, the earlier models, before they went to the separate bed, you know, when it was all one piece, yes. that, you know, you couldn't, you, you still can't find them. I mean, when people buy this vehicle, they hang on to it forever and ever. Yeah, you, don't, you never see them on the used car lot. No. As a matter nope. of fact, my cousin Steve and his wife, they had one for years and years and years. They bought it used. You couldn't tell it was used because the people that buy them take care of them. Yes. And uh, matter of fact, I was talking to somebody the other day about Hondas, and somebody had one, had 337,000 miles, and it was still going. Wow. It was yeah. beat up a little bit. but A little bit. Yeah. Yeah. Well, we bought a Honda back when we were living in San Antonio because we were coming back and forth. And it had 225-something on it and some change when I gave it to one of the granddaughters to drive. And uh, I don't know how many miles it had on it when she parted with it. Gosh, back in, I want to say it was the late 80s, bought a Honda Accord. Back in the day when the little square box Honda Accord, when they were so popular, everybody was buying them. You couldn't find them. And I bought one from the dealership across from Sharpstown Mall, whatever the name of it was. And... uh, at this particular time, they didn't offer a leather interior. But if you wanted a leather interior, they had somebody that would upfit it with a leather interior for, I don't know what it was, $1,500 yeah. or dealer something. Dealer installed. Yeah. De- mm-hmm. Well, actually, it wasn't a dealer. They farmed it out to somebody. Yeah, and they did it. Sub- actually, subbed it out. Yeah. yeah you would never, you'd never, you could never tell that it wasn't a factory job. It was, it was really nice and really liked it. The only drawback was i want to see it was like thirty-five thousand miles you had to change the timing belt and i'm going what the timing belt and it cost me a thousand dollars to change the timing belt because you had to take basically the top half of the engine off all right Mm-mm-mm. so um we is steve here yet He's not here yet. No, is he? no, we, got, not yet. we want to do events. Well, I, yeah, I was going to say let's uh, let's go and move on into the upcoming events calendar. Cool. So coming up on next Saturday, July the twenty seventh, the Houston Back to School Vendor Market and Caffeine and Chrome Car Show. Now, this is going to be at Gateway Classic Cars of Houston, pet friendly, family friendly, food trucks, local vendors, and it really is to help get some more school supplies in for some of the people that actually need some. That's mm-hmm. at 1910 Cypress Dri- Stations Drive. That's a good class. Uh, 9 a.m. to 2 p.m. Then on August the 10th and 11th what? of 2024 at the Houston NRG Park is the Texas Elite Auto Showcase. Now, this is Houston's newest indoor car show. Custom cars, trucks, and some exotics. This is a Saturday and Sunday. Great show to be inside in the beginning of August. So go to TexasEliteAutoShowcase.com for more information on getting tickets and some of the vehicles that are going to be I there. I wonder if they're going to raffle off a car. You Ooh, think? That would be cool. Maybe. I heard they're going to have a what was a, a $6 million uh, Pagani. Pagani. That would be a great one to raffle off. There you go. Dude. Dude, can, on top of everything else, can you imagine raffle off a car? Do you know what's involved in a raffle? If you get sideways with the state of Texas yeah. or the IRS in a raffle, you're going to prison. Mm-hmm. Not jail. You're going to prison. Mm-mm-mm. Raffle? Oh, no. Really? I remember, then, I remember getting years, involved into a car and transferring titles. I Ooh. guess I'm not going to win. Can you imagine no, what, no. A, what a nightmare that would be? I, no, thanks. We yeah. got caught up in that at the radio station years ago. We had a raffle for something. And we thought that we'd done all of our homework. We didn't run the, the, the rules through a lawyer. <laughs> and we almost, we almost had to go to jail to get out of that deal. It was a big Again. fiasco. Again. <laughs> Yeah, but it's something different this time. It was yeah. a raffle. Another event coming up August the seventeenth: wheels, watches, and whiskey. This is at the Stella Hotel. Autograph Wait a minute. Collection. Wait a minute. Run that slower. Wheels, wheels watches, watches and, and, whiskey. and whiskey. This is at the Stella Hotel Autograph Collection in Bryan, Texas. Now this is presented by the gentleman racer and McLaren. <laughs> 
They're going to have exotic and classic cars, premium whiskey tasting, and they're going to have a, a big uh, display of luxury watches you can buy and a silent auction. Again, this is a charitable event going on. The only thing you is some big fat cigars. Uh, yeah, smoking is bad for you again. Mm -hmm. So then uh, the last two, September the 28th, Woody's Six Annual Waterfront Rod and Custom Show. We're going to be live there in San Leon, Texas. San Leon. San not Leon. Leon. <laughs> Leon. 1920 to 2004, best truck, best rat rod imports. Uh, go to Facebook.com, Woody's Waterfront Rod and Custom Show. And your te English teacher will be uh, there as well to try to get it all straightened out for you. <laughs> yeah, San Leon. She gave up. Last one, October the 19th. Again, back to the past car show. We're going to be there. This is the annual Open Classic Car Truck and Motorcycle Show benefiting Spring Branch Senior High School We're Foundation. We're going to be there? We're going to be there live. 9016 Westview Drive, Houston, well, Texas. Go hopefully to we won't be dead. Springbranchbears.com slash right. car show for more information on Facebook. Spring Branch Bears. All right. <laughs> and you like can it. catch the Inwheel Time Car Talk show through the iHeartRadio app. Just look for Inwheel Time Car Talk. We also video stream our live three-hour show on Facebook, YouTube, and on InWheelTime.com. Podcasts available from your favorite podcast provider. The Inwheel Time Car Talk show will continue after this quick Pit stop. Pro-Am Auto Accessories has been serving Houston's auto enthusiasts since 1984, providing world-class products for sports cars, European sedans, and American muscle. Pro-Am is known as the place to go to find exclusive and hard-to-find parts and accessories. Pro-Am is one of the very first distributors in the USA for brands such as Recaro, Redline, Momo, Corbo, and Simpson. Located in the heart of Houston's premier retail and service corridor, the Galleria area, Pro-Am's walk-in storefront includes an 8,000-square-foot warehouse, showroom, and installation. Installation bays. Pro Am not only sells parts and accessories but also offers installation and service. Pro Am is now reaching a worldwide audience through ProAm.com, taking its local reputation to the rest of the world. At Pro Am Auto, you'll be dealing with a small group of professionals who truly want to help you with your automotive needs. If you don't see what you're looking for on the website, call and Pro Am will lend you a hand. Pro Am Auto, 6125 Richmond at Green Ridge in Houston's Galleria area. Call them at 713 781 7755. Want to feel good about something special you did for someone special? In Wheel Time and the original Loopy Tortilla Group of Tex Mex restaurants have joined together to help a very worthy cause God's Garage, a Christian based 501c3 charity. We know there are lots of places and organizations out there where you can donate a car, truck, or SUV. But we're asking you, our car enthusiast family, to consider donating to God's Garage. Visit GodsGarage.org and learn about its mission, the women that have been helped, how each one is screened, and about their Restore You program. A car donation is an easy way to make a difference in the lives of others. God's Garage needs good operating vehicles, but will take all types in working and non-working condition. Make your heart and soul feel good by donating your gently used vehicle and help support single mothers, widows, and wives of deployed military at godsgarage.org. All right, and hey, welcome back to the In Wheel Time Car Talk Show on this Saturday for our live program, 8 to 11. Every Saturday we are live. And uh, so if you're listening on a podcast or something... We're live. We're not live if you're listening on a podcast. <laughs> but we're not dead either. No. We're just uh, doing other things. So. We're similar. We are. Well, look who's decided to show up. Ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> Sergeant Stephen Woodard from the Department of Public Safety, also known as the State Trooper Extraordinaire. I was, that's what I was Stephen, thinking. good morning. Hey, good morning. You know, you know what we say out here in the streets, ain't no party like an in-wheel time party. <laughs> <laughs> what streets are you hanging on? <laughs> yeah, we... <laughs> <laughs> are you are you are you you're at the house? No, I'm in the office. Come on, now. this is your office. Yeah, th this is the office. Uh, I mean, it's nothing much to it. Um, hot tub. <laughs> I guess. Well, so I'm I'm on my laptop because that that whole, whole internet computer glitch shut down all of our DPS systems. Isn't that something? <laughs> so, are you serious? Um, and, it ain't, it, and it's not back up yet. Yeah, um, and, you know, I don't know if my driver's licenses or offices are up yet. I won't know that until Monday, but I, uh, I'm i rebooting things on my main computer. But, hey, I'm in the office, and uh, I mean, nothing much to look at, just a bunch of junk like like Fred Sanford, you know. 
<laughs> you know, I, I will. The troops call it a museum. Oh, well, it is. It, it's the Woodard Museum, which is well, famous around the world. Quick. Let me show you something real quick. So I collect state trooper hats. Ah. So if you go around here, let's see if I get an angle. So I got all state trooper hats all the way around the office. And uh, from, from uh, obviously, pretty much every state in the United States. Oh, and, and, and cool. There's a story. There's a, well, I just, and uh, I don't have a California Highway Patrol hat, but I got a California Highway Patrol motorcycle helmet. Oh, that's cool. But, nice. Um, there's there's a story behind each hat, and uh, uh it's just, it's whatever. Well, Half of the time, I'm not in here. We so, you know. we collect warrants here at In Wheel Time. <laughs> War- <laughs> warrants. <laughs> All right, let me let me log off. I'm on my way. <laughs> <laughs> exactly. Uh, hey, so I, I, go ahead. I, I'm sorry. No, you go ahead. No, uh, I, I will tell you, I am. I, I consider myself blessed. You know, after that crazy storm uh i just had some minor inconveniences like a fence i i'm just really grateful we didn't lose power because that gave me the ability and the peace of mind to go out and help our community uh, i tell you something fellas it's, it's hard going out into the community and your your homestead is all messed up so i was one of the lucky ones you know a fence is nothing you know just prop it up and roll but i spent the majority of my time down in matagorda county we're still down there providing help, and there's still some individuals, as you know, that do not have power. So, a uh, big shout out, uh, and can I do shout outs on this program? Absolutely. Yeah. Big shout out to our troopers uh, coming in from various areas, helping out the city of Houston. And again, I know Houston gets a lot of, of the highlight, but man, our folks in our outline areas, like uh, Brazoria County, Matagorda County, et cetera, man, they were displaced. So. A lot of troops came down to help out uh, to man streets and roadways because a lot of police agencies were displaced, so we had to fill in the gaps. A lot of agencies came down from other cities uh, like Dallas, Fort Worth, et cetera, to help out Houston. So, hey, I will tell you, hurricane preparedness is important. And if you, if, if Barrow didn't teach you anything or kind of stir some things up, I mean, uh, I don't know what will. So let's just be mindful uh, obviously, we know about our hurricane preparedness kits, and I have a layout of that on our website, the TexasDPS.gov, uh, of examples of kits. Uh, I have a few items here in the office if folks need some stuff to kind of uh, start. But that's what we do here on In Will Time. We, we help out our community by entertaining them uh, and giving them actual car facts to keep them safe. And we do this. So uh, I can help you out with that. But I want to talk about the intersection. I want to talk about the four way stop. Oh my God! Thank God, <laughs> Steve. I didn't, uh, I, 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 I didn't know this is a church program. Do, do, does, <laughs> do, do, does the Amen, brother? The, does yeah, the yeah, right. does the stupid come out at a four way <laughs> stop when the lights are out? I, yeah, dude, bit, I have bit. I have never in my entire I never used the horn. I had to use the horn several times in the past week trying to get through a four-way stop. People don't know what to do. It's, it's one horn. of the first <laughs> things you learn in driving class. Yield to the right, my friend. It's so hey, easy. Lord, I, I'm, like a, I'm like a dentist. I hit a nerve. <laughs> yes, you did. <laughs> oh, my God. I, it's like, please, continue on. I, my my well, rant no, you, could go on. Well, no, you hit it. You hit it without a doubt. I mean, uh, I, I don't really have to say much, but I want to take – I want to take a little bit of time to talk about the old uh, cliche and the reminder. So um, obviously we know when we come to a four-way stop, stop lights are at all four corners and the lights are out. We know, hell, it can, it can be a, a small wind and the lights, uh, the light system will go out in Houston. Yep. But there are two different systems. All right, and I'll explain that this to you. So obviously when the lights are out completely, there is a complete power outage somewhere. And we have to wait on the city of Houston along with that electric authority to figure out what they're going to do with that. If the lights are blinking, then there was a power, power outage surge and these, these, pretty, these intersections have to be reset. So there's an outage and there's a blinkage. So when this blinking, the lights have to be reset. And that's simple with a bone key. I have one of my patrol car. It, it's literally a brass key. I can go to the box, open it, and I can control the actual signal. Somebody has to get there to do that. Yeah. Power outage, no lights are out. So state of Texas says this. 
It says that we need to treat that intersection as a four-way stop, as if there's stop signs there. All right, I think we probably, I don't want to get into the numbers of tickets because I don't want folks to think that we're just out there writing tickets, but I will tell you, unfortunately, we had to write a bunch of them. And a lot of folks were like, man, really, doing a storm? Well, I mean, come on. So we treat it like a four-way stop. Two, two categories I want to talk about. Me and Brother Mars, we show up to that blinking light. <laughs> I get there first. I won. Yep. First man yep. wins. That's right. Done deal. That's it. Mic drop. Now, here is the problem. Myself, my Brother Mars and myself, we show up together simultaneously in sync. Now, who's got the right of one? If you're in the black and white, you do. <laughs> That's not yeah. right. Yeah. I'd shoot him. I'm, I'm just, just saying. Shoot him. <laughs> I'm just saying. Just always yield him. to the black and white. Turn my camera off. This, this show derails me. I don't, it, I'm serious. Hey, hey, here's the deal. I'm working it. I'm in a zone. Then all of a sudden, Mars comes in and derails. Well, I mean, that's the truth. That's the way I look at it. Yeah, well, guess that's, what? That's right. That's right. That's yeah. Right. So, so if you're on the left, you yield to him. I always yeah, yield yeah. to him in the black and white. I, I don't care. No. Shoot well, him. Well, here's the deal. I mean, obviously, right is right. And I just cut, sure. a, I just cut a safety PSA that I'm going to put out next week on this. Right is right. Whoever's on the right is right. Right is right. Yep. But I'm going to go to old dad. This is this is not the DPS handbook. This is not this is not a driver's ed. I'm talking about my daddy. He always told me, he said, son, always look a man in the eye at an intersection. He said, you can tell a lot about what an individual's intentions is if they, if you're looking at them at, yes. at an intersection. Yep. Now that's hard to do now with these tinted windshields. We're taking care of those problems as well. But always try to look an individual in the face to see what their intentions are. Now, I would say this, man, just let that guy go. Even if he's right, or even if you're right, I would just flash my blinkers. And if there's if there's a doubt that this guy's going to continue along simultaneously with you at an intersection, let him go. But state law says right is right. The individual on the right has the right of way, and the first man at the intersection, that individual wins. I would like to say that that citation is a $200 citation. And um, judges are not dismissing that one. So this is not this is not about a stump the chump or writing ticket uh, segment. I appreciate him well time allowing me to come aboard. But I'm telling you, it's always a problem, and crashes always hike up at intersections. I like oh, the yeah. one, I like the ones where the guy just blows through the whole thing, just sure, right yeah, on through. I yeah. ran one of those. That's uh, that was another horn usage uh, episode. Mm. He just blew through there like. And he knew that because he had to wait for all the other cars to go. So he just gloms on to another car, and he just blows through with the other car. Yeah, tag, I'm it. It's yeah, yeah, well, yeah. Can, I, can I ask you guys something? What are your thoughts on the uh, the vehicle inspection law? I was wanting to ask you about that. Uh, yeah. I think it's garbage. I think that we need we need to have vehicle inspection. If nothing else, the safety inspection. Yeah, we just yeah. take it for I mean, granted that most of the cars these days <laughs> Pardon me. That most of the cars these days pass the emissions test. But yeah, yeah. So well, I, I, the interesting thing is, um, you know, most vehicles uh, will be eliminated from that actual inspection standard, and uh, that came up under House Bill uh, thirty-two ninety-seven, and it was passed obviously during our last eighty-eight uh, legislation. It was signed. Uh, by law, and basically, I mean, I hate to use this word, but the, the, the word is it abolishes, abolishes the vehicle inspection uh, safety program um, for non-commercial vehicles, meaning the regular vehicle. Obviously, our 18-wheelers, in layman's terms, they'll still be under that umbrella. So this begins June, uh, January 1st, January 1st, 2025, and we got a lot going on in 25. I can't wait till we get closer. I really appreciate in real time allowing me to come on through the years. I mean, especially with these metal plates about uh, these metal temp tags are coming. I mean, they're pressing them right now, but that's another story. But it starts January first, uh, twenty twenty-five, and I think I sent Mars that um, that uh, press release we put out. Um, and I mean, it just says these vehicles no longer need a safety inspection. But there's a however to that. Um, the however obviously applies to commercial motor vehicles. 
but um, these these vehicles that are in larger counties like Harris County where we are, uh, Travis, Barrett County, the larger cities, uh, they'll still be up under the emissions umbrella. Um, all non-commercial vehicles in our state uh, will be subject to a two uh, well, what is that a seven dollar and fifty cent inspection program replacement fee, and this fee will be added to your the total. Uh, when you go get the vehicle registered uh, with the uh, Texas Department of Motor Vehicles. So, here's the deal. Obviously, um, you know, Mike mentioned about the emissions. It all derives around the emissions. Certain counties fall under that. I already told you larger counties are, are part of that emissions program. Uh, just off the top of my head, Fort Bend is one of them. Uh, Montgomery County, any larger county, they're going to be a part of that. Uh, but I will say this, it's still going to be the driver's responsibility to make sure that their vehicle is inspected. Um, and the first thing the trooper looks at, this is a little known secret. When we walk to a vehicle, first thing that we're looking at, we're looking at, the, we're doing a cursory check of the vehicle. We're taking a look at tires, et cetera. So just be mindful that that uh, unsafe vehicle could be a contributing factor to a crash, but as of now, a lot of our smaller counties, they're off the hook. They're off the hook. So, hey, we just want to remind you guys of that. And then as we get closer to the end of the year, I'll go in depth, probably do a whole segment on that. Yeah, we need to because we're, we're running out of time here today. But I got lots of questions about that, you know, particularly with my, my grandkids starting to drive and, and making sure that, that we're all on the same line. So we need to come back and revisit this a little bit later. Easy stuff. Uh, well, lastly, I want to throw this to you so we know that the Texas Department of Public Safety, we allow we allow the Parent Talk program. The interesting thing about the Parent Talk program is parents are forgetting to do the parallel parking portion. And they're, they're teaching the kids how to turn left, turn right, initiate the turn signal, et cetera. But when the young man or young lady arrives to the DL office to do their test, they fail because they cannot parallel park. Mm -hmm. parallel, park parallel parking is interesting. All, all four of us may parallel park, what, once a year? Maybe. Yeah. Uh, and I'll tell you what. I'll tell you what, Steve. The real good thing are those vehicles that have the automatic parallel parking. So you said, okay, we're going to do the parallel parking test. Don pushes the button, and I got it knocked. <laughs> there you go. There you go. Why do, and as I get ready to go, because Mike is pulling out the hook, um, what is the reason for parallel parking? Well, it's basically parallel parking is designed to let us know that an individual can operate a vehicle at slow speeds and it gives us a backing test. So, you know, interestingly enough, I'm here at my office in Rosenberg. I'm meeting a young lady at 10 o'clock out of the graciousness of my heart. I'm not doing this for everybody. But her dad had problems teaching her how to parallel park. I said, hey, man, I'll be at the office. Meet me at 10. I'll teach her how to parallel park like a pro. Are you, you going to be the Coach Macy and go, you can't talk. To, you Stop doing it that way. You get. Is it going to be one of those? <laughs> yes. <laughs> <laughs> hey, I, I appreciate y'all through the years. Thank you for always letting me come on and share my little message. We love hey, you, you know, Stephen Woodard. I love you, too. All uh, right, really you take care, man. Thanks so much. Steve Woodard, he is the, uh, he is the man. Um, well, it's too late now, isn't it? Maybe not. We got to roll commercial. Yeah. Yeah, we, we do. We do. Yeah, yeah. So we're going to take a quick break. But uh, I'd like to remind you that if you'd like to get in touch with us, shoot us an email. The address is info at inwheeltime.com. The original group of Loopy Tortilla Restaurants will have you telling your family and friends just what the original recipe means when it comes to the best fajitas in Southeast Texas. Founder Stan Holt invites you to visit the first Loopy Tortilla near I-10 and Highway 6. Here is the original house that inspired the design of all the rest and the original charm that helped make Loopy Tortilla the go-to destination for Houston Tex-Mex. Nothing can compete with the original lime pepper marinade that everyone will agree makes Loopy Tortilla award-winning beef fajitas the best anywhere. Loopy Tortilla Katie's and other location that gives you the same quality and service Houstonians have come to expect at Loopy's. It's located on 99 the Grand Parkway at Kingsland Boulevard in Katy. Find yourself in Aggieland? Head to the Loopy Tortilla in College Station. Located just around the corner from Kyle Field, it's a great place to enjoy those famous frozen margaritas before or after the game. 
Going to Louisiana, the Loopy Tortilla in Beaumont is on I-10, so you can't miss it. The original group of Loopy Tortilla restaurants has the best Tex-Mex anywhere, and you're invited anytime. Your car is a direct reflection of you, so don't be satisfied with color fade or a dingy, dull appearance. Get rid of those terrible automated car wash scratches. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is your save the paint company. John Gray and his team of detailing experts can help your cars finish without a full repaint. Searching for the real experts in window tint or windshield protection? Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Dash cams, radar detectors, Gulf Coast Auto Shield. Got a new car? Get that thing protected as soon as you take delivery. If you don't know which of the multitude of protection products to go with, John Gray will give you an honest opinion and won't sell you something you don't need or can't afford. John will help you understand the many options and pricing right on the spot. He's your guy to have your ride looking its best and protected too. See the state of the art shop yourself. Free tours anytime. Gulf Coast Auto Shield is easy to get to, located just south of the Southwest Freeway on the Sam Houston Parkway. Gulf Coast Auto Shield, full service luxury car care today and online at gcautoshield.com. That's it for this podcast episode of the In Wheel Time Car Show. I'm Don Armstrong, inviting you to join us for our live show every Saturday morning on Facebook, YouTube, Twitch, and our InWheelTime.com website. Podcasts are available on Apple Podcasts, Spotify, Stitcher, iHeart Podcast, Podcast Addict, TuneIn, Pandora, and Amazon Music. Keep listening, and we'll see you soon.